some people know how to win. They always win. See, that's me. No matter what, nothing can stop me from winning. Nothing can stop me from winning. So who is this winner? Who is James Gold St. Patrick? The man who wanted to leave the game from the very first episode. What if it can be more than that though? What if it's our retirement plan? As he told Tommy, talking about their club truth, being their exit plan because he knew drug dealers either end up dead or in jail, but throughout power, being dragged back into the life he desired to leave, as Tasha told him that she had a vision for him to be the biggest goddamn drug dealer in New York City, and Tommy telling Ghost that they'd been hustling together their whole lives. Ghost had to battle with who he was throughout the series of power, and at one point even saying, call me James, not Ghost. So we're gonna dissect James, Ghost St. Patrick's character, and how he created this illusion of a Appearing and disappearing just like a ghost so stick around till the end of this video but of course if you're new to the channel then remember to smash the subscribe button if you want to see everything power universe related especially as we move closer to the release of raising canaan which is coming on july the 18th but let's talk about this man james st patrick who throughout power was living a double life he owns truth a nightclub which was his dream and under his other persona his ghost he was a very conflicted person who wanted out of the game from the very beginning of the series because this club truth it was his dream his father owned a jazz club and at the end of the open Opening night of truth, he stood outside as the proud owner and said, You see that pop? I did it. Your boy did it. But Ghost was changing, and those were the words of Tasha herself as Ghost started to find that truth could be his way out. And although he had everything he wanted, he wanted to be this entrepreneur. He wanted to be this businessman, as he said himself. He aspired to the wealth and power of a man like Simon Stern. But when Ghost tried to change, this was met with resistance from those around him and from those that were closest to him. He had people around him that never shared the same vision as him, such as Tasha and Tommy. And the reason why Ghost had to get rid of Kanan, because he never shared the same vision as him either and the first season showed us for James St. Patrick that power requires self-discipline, some selfishness and with the prospect of wealth, the double life and all the lies, it plays havoc with the emotions because his double life was then on a collision course with his club truth in disarray, Kanan plotting to take back his business and with the struggles with Tasha and Angela, Ghost's cause wasn't helped with the struggles with his relationship with Tommy either, especially when it came to Holly trying to bribe a way out of Tommy's life because Tommy was Ghost's right hand man. They grew up together and hustled together their whole lives. They were brothers that ran deeper than blood. And Tommy was the one who loved the partnership he had with Ghost. He was a real street soldier. But Ghost also put Tommy in difficult and uncomfortable situations, often leaving him to deal with club business. For example, when they were having the sit down with all of the premieres. But Ghost was one who also struggled with his double life. No matter how much he tried to focus on the club, the streets always found a way to pull him back in. The more product he took from Lobos, taking on more pressure, making the wrong calls by trusting the wrong people such as Kanan. And by the end of season, Season 2, Ghost realised the only way to leave the double life behind was to kill everybody associated to him that knows him as Ghost, for him to stand a chance of going legit. He kills everybody that knows him as Ghost and even manages to keep Angela Valdez, but could he really leave Ghost in the past? The answer to that question I'm sure we all knew at the time was of course not because you can't leave a life like Ghost had, but he tried as he moved into season 3 as a legit businessman pursuing his dream which ultimately finished with him being arrested by Angela Valdez for the murder of Greg Knox. Again this double life was really problematic for James St. Patrick and his problem was he was always loyal to himself first than he was to others and Ghost himself he had a distinct ability to read situations and come up with plans which effectively put him three moves ahead of his opponents but unfortunately he never planned on being behind bars and for the first time we really saw a slight vulnerable side to Ghost as he thought he was being pinned for the murder of Agent Greg Knox and gonna get the needle but as I touched on earlier could James St. Patrick leave the Ghost life behind? Of course not. When you think of the name Ghost this is something or someone you can't see. You can't see a ghost, therefore the spirit of ghost always lived within James St. Patrick and also came with a distinct ability to appear and disappear in certain situations just like a ghost but making sure his presence was always felt and this is the ability that James St. Patrick had. Creating a ghost-like effect, he realised that sometimes he had to distance himself from situations that are not in his control and also by creating an illusion of being in multiple places at the same time. For example in season 3, appearing at the hotel with Tasha, creating the perfect alibi but disappearing to kill Felipe Lobos. James created a ghost-like effect and the illusion of being in two places at one time. This was Ghost at its very best. So you can really describe Ghost or James St. Patrick in many ways as long as you back up your argument. I mentioned earlier that I thought he was loyal to himself and was a little selfish, but one thing I would say Ghost wasn't was evil. He believed in giving people second chances and with some people he just never had the heart to kill them. The first being Kanan. 
Tasha tried to convince Ghost to kill Kanan to then take over the drug empire, but Ghost chose to send him to prison instead. Maria Suarez, Ghost let her go in the very first episode, something which would later come back and haunt Ghost, but still giving Maria Suarez an opportunity to disappear rather than kill her, the same method he used on Holly and Ruiz. He gave Dre a chance by taking him off the streets and taught him his blueprint, because as Kanan likes to say, Ghost is always trying to create clones of himself, but Ghost believed in giving people second chances and taking them off the streets, just like he did with Julio brokering a deal to have him freed from the Taurus Locos gang, which is why Julio always felt as if he owed Ghost. And Sean, even with a gun to Ghost's head with the intention of killing his uncle G, Ghost gave him a chance to leave New York and never come back, but was ultimately killed by his own father. Now Kanan, he was the definition of pure evil, a man who brutally killed his own son. There was a difference between Ghost and Kanan, but let's not forget how Ghost created the success that he created. It was based around being loyal to himself and a vision that Kanan didn't share, and we'll have to rewind it back to a story that we'll hopefully we'll see play out in Power Book 3 Raising Kanan, but Ghost stood over an empire which was originally Kanan's. Ghost and Tommy made great success at Kanan's expense, who Ghost cast aside by having him sent to prison. And Ghost really created this persona of being unstoppable. Towards the end of power, Tasha said if Ghost became Lieutenant Governor of New York, he really would have been unstoppable. Don't you get it, Rashad? He's already unstoppable. There's nothing I can do about that. Ghost I would say was very close to being unstoppable, but Ghost annoyed a lot of people and when I mean a lot of people there was Rashad Tate, Dre, Paz, Cooper Sacks, Tasha, Tommy and Tariq. He gave everybody a reason to want him dead and ultimately Ghost was in the way of his son's future, just like Kanan and Breeze was in the way of Ghost. Ghost killed Breeze and had to send Kanan to prison, so in the end there was only two outcomes for Ghost and that was either ending up dead or in jail. And to kill someone like Ghost it really had to come from someone who he least expected it from and here comes the last connection between Ghost and Tariq's story and having Tariq decide his father's fate which shows he really is a reflection of his father Ghost but as I've mentioned before even with his death Ghost still won the game of power as he remains in control of Tariq St. Patrick, having him go to college to graduate to inherit his estate, leaving nothing for Tasha, and Ghost got what he wanted in the end. But this is only part one of Ghost character analysis, because as I mentioned before, there are so many ways you can evaluate a character like James, Ghost St. Patrick, so I will be doing a part two where I dive deeper into other aspects of Ghost character, so drop me your thoughts on what you think about Ghost. Do you think Ghost successfully lived this double life, this life he lived as James and a life he lived as Ghost? Do you think he created this illusion of ghosts by having the ability to appear and disappear? Drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section and of course if you're new to the channel and you haven't done so already then remember to smash the subscribe button. But thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.